Hello you, welcome to Geekism, you join me again in Pinewood Hills where we're getting started on our first major ride uh, which is going to be a classic there and back wooden coaster uh, very much in the style of some of the early 30s coasters like the Velvet Coaster and uh, the Big Dipper and things like that. This one in fact is very reminiscent of the Big Dipper at Blackpool as I rode it uh, a few days ago, uh, about a week ago now if you've uh, seen on the channel I did do a vlog uh, about my trip to Blackpool, had a fantastic day riding some of the, uh, the classic wooden Wooden coasters there. Five different wooden coasters there were, uh, although one of them, the uh, the, wild, the wooden wild mare, is one of only two in the world, uh, wasn't on running, uh, unfortunately. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's going to be running again. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't uh, look in a good way at all, unfortunately. But the other ones were fantastic, including the um, the Big Dipper there, which is uh, a real sort of classic uh, there and back at Woody. And, uh, and like I say, this is very much a reminiscence of it. That, uh, it has a weird little, sort of comes out of the station, wraps around a little S-bend on itself before it goes up the lift hill, and then it comes back around the top of itself and back down again, where there's a large structure. It's really what I wanted to go for here. But the other thing I really wanted to do was have a hill up there behind the, uh, the Pinewood logo. So trying to fit it in here, uh, my only problem with it is, is that it loses, um, uh, we've messed around with the friction a little bit, but it still loses a lot of momentum. You know, we're already sort of a good, you know, uh, halfway into the ride by the point that it makes the uh, the end of that hill above the Pinewood logo. And I really wanted to keep the momentum up a little bit earlier than that. Uh, and also, it's uh, it's very un it's not very um, realistic to have it drop down into a big loop and then and then do like a really banked curve because these rides just didn't have these huge bank curves. They often had um, quite jarring curves, to be honest. So. I'm going to have a couple of goes uh, using uh, using this this sort of looping back on itself technique. They end up flipping the whole ride round on itself, so the lift hill actually uh, that goes up. So we lose that. Uh, lose this bit here where we wrap around that we were going to do a structure up there uh, we lose that bit unfortunately but I still think it actually works out quite nicely because we still have the uh, the S bend uh, before the lift hill uh, and then we have a, a nice big drop going into uh, into the Pinewood logo you'll see here I'll have another go and then I realise ah I could turn this round and, uh, and have another go which is exactly what we do so uh, we're using the monster uh, I'm not really like that up I'm learning more and more about my coasters I'm not really that up on them um, and I can't really I don't really know the difference between the wooden coasters that are in the game apart from I know there's a there's one that's a GCI woody but that's meant to be a more modern uh, wooden coaster I believe um, so which is the Nala I think I, I think that's how it works I'm not 100% too sure but this one uh, the, the the seats looked like they do when I rode the Big Dipper and that's kind of all I'm basing this on like I say I'm trying my hardest to uh, you know to use techniques that I've picked up from various places Coast to College uh, you know Silverette Series Coast to College but then also just doing a lot of research on the rides myself and reading up on them and looking at sort of layouts and plans and stuff there's most definitely work I can do here um, and obviously you know if you're a bit more knowledgeable on them please drop any suggestions down in the comments this isn't a set design uh, this is really just sort of what I uh, what I really want to do there's a few things i really wanted to do really wanted that s bend there before the the lift hill really wanted a hill over the pinewood logo there and then this bit was the main thing i had in my head right from the very beginning i wanted to have um an interaction with the path as the path moves forward into the uh, the next sort of area so originally this uh this wooden coaster here kind of uh, sort of is the border of the park almost it would be you know the furthest thing you get to on the left and on the right the, the path would just stop where this coaster was uh, but then obviously as the park uh, developed over the years they need to find ways uh, to you know expand the land and then uh, one thing I really wanted to do was to have the, uh, the the coaster interact with the path there and also here with the car park a little bit as well so I want to do a really big sort of uh, hill up into a sweeping curve and back down again it's very reminiscent of something like the Grand National also at Blackpool um, so that's that's kind of my inspiration there. Now this uh, this original back end here, um, I I find it's a little bit too sweeping. Um, I actually go back and have another go at it. At the moment, I'm doing some really large sort of sweeping bunny hills, and having looked back again over a few of the uh, the plans uh, for various uh, old school coasters, it's just not something they really do. So I actually go back and edit that later on, and we actually split the ride up and open it up quite wide again, which isn't something you, uh, you see very often. Uh, these often these rides often stay very close to each other. They use the sort of the, the, the track uses the supports twice almost as it goes there and back. Um, but I, um, I I I've opened it up a little bit. 
whether I'm completely happy with it, I'm not sure. I'd like a little bit of feedback from you guys, really. One thing I really wanted to do was to have this um, was to have this final curve sort of follow the, the original curve there. So it's all really tightly packed in at the beginning, which, is, again, is very sort of uh, traditional of a lot of these wooden coasters, very tightly packed. Um, but I did want to do it there and back. I didn't want to do sort of like a looped around one where it sort of uh, flips over itself a few times. And, um, you know, th this, is, this is meant to be built around the 30s. And, you know, there and back coasters were built in the 30s in the UK. Like I say, the Big Dipper, uh, the Velvet Coaster, the roller, uh, or just Roller Coaster at Blackpool. Uh, all of those sort of very classic there and back uh, there and back coasters. So um, I felt it was okay to do a there and back one, even though this is meant to be a very early build. Um, I did consider holding on until the, uh, the 1.4 update came out and using the side friction coaster that we're getting, the Hop the Dips or Loop the Gaps or whatever they've decided to call it. Um, but um, to be honest with you, those very those usually really are tightly packed coasters. The, the 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 scenic railways or the side friction coasters, they they pretty much just go there like loop around themselves three or four times. So I really wanted something here that would create one that would create a fantastic skyline to the park and also would kind of uh, like I say border the uh, the original space original area of the ride. So uh, here we go. I think I do a quick run through here just to see what speed is like and things like that. Um, Overall, I'm really happy with this first half. All this is fine. Obviously, we do a smoothing pass later on. Everything's fine until this drop. This is where I'm not happy with it. It comes a little bit too sweeping here. Obviously, I'll do a full uh, a full run through later on. Uh, obviously, I have to have a go at this bit as well. I forgot to put some drive tyres in. And rather than use drive tyres, I want to do, uh, stick to using gravity, which is pretty much something they always do uh, in uh, in these coasters. It's very rare that you see drive tyres. The other thing I wasn't too sure about with uh, with this original coaster was whether or not we would have a transfer track system set up in place. Um, I wasn't too sure whether that technology was available for them. Turns out it is, from all I can tell. Grand, both Grand National and um, and the Big Dipper and uh, and also the Nickelodeon Streak, uh, which was originally just called Roller Coaster. Um, all of those have transfer tracks. Normally, it just transfers off into the station, so there's a place to store a vehicle. Um, but a couple of times, I did see them have a separate um, transfer building where they could store a co coaster as well, which a coaster car as well, which is what we're going to be doing here. So um, once I've got the uh, the rough layout done. It's at this point, I try and set up block brakes, it just doesn't really work very well. They end up just sitting at the top of the lift hill. I didn't want to set up block brakes midway through the ride, it's just not very realistic. So we do just run on one coaster. So here we go, this is, you'll see there that there's part of the ride very dipped down into the ground. It's very much because I've got it in my head that I wanted the path to both go under the coaster and over the coaster. It's going to create some real nice sight lines there. Uh, it's kind of where the path's going to stop for a little while because we're not moving into that area until uh, until a little bit later. Uh, but here you see, I've already done the, uh, the second go of it here so it opens up uh, the ride quite a bit uh, here again this ends up too smooth they end up going back in and doing a double down there we had a double down and a double up into this coaster again you'll see that on the uh, the live state live uh, live bit in a minute um, but other than that we uh, have a little go with some terrain here and then also using this larger space in the middle thought it would work quite nicely for a small pond so we got a pond there again real rough pass here the next couple of episodes are going to be us detailing the uh, both the terrain around the coaster and also obviously the station and the uh, the other area around the coasters as well but for now I just wanted to put the water in just to kind of see how it lay and uh, I actually think it works quite nicely uh, last thing we're going to do in the time lapse is start laying out the pathwork for uh, for where the uh, the sort of plaza for the coast is going to be. Also, I want to talk a little bit about this area um, regarding other rides and uh, midway as well, which is something we've been talking about for the last few episodes. Uh, but I'll do that in the uh, the live action section in just a moment. Here you can see we're just using a technique combination of the uh, of the grid and. Um, and the regular paths there to give us a nice sort of open area and then also we've been working here on a backstage path uh, that will, will, will eventually work its way down there as well right let's cut uh, let's cut to live and we'll have a look what we've done right here we are in uh, in the uh, in pinewood hills again uh, one thing i didn't realize is people are going to use this path the little buggers uh, so we're going to have to get rid of that and come up with a another way of, uh, of joining that up later on that's fine uh, so yeah because this is going to be all back way so we talked about midway a lot and uh, one thing I want to mention is that this is going to be a pretty big midway area pretty much all down here it's going to be a midway strip and maybe some hot dogs and drinks and things like that um, the reason I haven't done it and the reason I wanted to do the coaster first was because one thing I've noticed at least in the UK and at least the parks I've been to recently I've been to both Alton Towers and Blackpool Pleasure Beach in the last couple of weeks I've been to these parks many times before um, but I've never really gone with my design head on you know with my 
and sort of planet goes to head on. So I've gone this time and I really hope I've had a look at the place. And one thing I did notice with Midway is that even in the smaller parks that are less themed, the Midway is still themed about whatever it's near. So it's very rare that you'll get just a Midway but you'll get Pirate Midway near the Pirate Log Flume. You'll get, um, you know, Viking Midway near Valhalla in um, in Blackpool. I noticed all the, all the sort of claw grabbers and, uh, you know, basketball hoops and things were all Viking basketball hoops for no reason other than that's just kind of how the place is done. And uh, again, at Alton Towers, the Gloomy Wood, uh, Forbidden Forest or whatever, you know, they all have their sort of spooky themed uh, midway. The games themselves are very generic, but the buildings they're housed in are uh, very themed towards whatever they're near or at least the area where they're in. Now, we are going to be getting into slightly themed areas later on in Pinewood, but for now at least it's going to still stay relatively generic. But one thing I really wanted to do was to box off the coaster station and the, and the name of the coaster and then build the midway around that. Okay, so I have got a building in mind for the coaster station. Uh, I'm going to go, it's a real life building, it's not a coaster station in real life though, but I'm going to go and get some shots of that uh, this week, uh, ready for the next episode. So, um, so it's going to be based around a real life building uh, this is uh, something near my work, you'll see, anyway, next week. And then I'm going to place uh, the rest of the Midway buildings uh, around this area based on that. The other thing I'm probably going to do is uh, this is going to be the capped off area here. For now, at least, we may eventually open this up to, to a new area, but here is the, uh, the, the part that's going to cap off. We may end up sticking a flat right here. You'll notice the chair plane went. Uh, there, just, there just isn't enough room for it. We've still got the queue, but I'll get rid of that. There just isn't enough room for it here uh, with the backstage in there. So what we'll end up doing is probably having little gardens here and then midway down on this lower level. Um, and then over here... What we'll eventually have is uh, is this path will come through here, probably flat ride here, I think. That'll work quite nicely for that space. Uh, and then this will uh, open up into um, first sort of major development, really, uh, which is going to be this area here. But there we go. Well, that's uh, what the coaster looks like. Like I say, I'm not 100% sure about this little bit on its own here. I don't know whether it would actually be more beneficial to follow the, the track here. Please, suggestions on a postcard, really, regarding that one. I mean, either way, kind of makes the same ride. Um, you know, we can just do a bit of an edit. Part of me likes the idea that it goes around a little lake. Part of me thinks uh, that the you know the layout looks quite nice. You've got this cool sort of triangular uh, space here where they join and come away again. But then also, I, I'm struggling to find an older coaster that does this uh, much as well. Apart from some of the older American ones like um, uh, like Jack Rabbit and things like that. So uh, yeah, answers on a postcard really is what you think of that. For, we'll finish off by giving it a ride. Uh, we don't want Alfred Mattingly. We want the uh, the coaster itself. There we go. So we'll go on the right camera, and we'll go to a... Uh, we've only got one train, so we'll just have to wait for it to finish, but it's coming in now. So we can do something like that. There we go. So we'll uh, speed it up. Let it all fill up and fill out again. Here we go, they're all clearing off. All the new people coming in, there we go. So uh, yeah, like I say, this first bit here, where you sort of go under the lift hill, very similar to uh, the Big Dipper. Not a not a piece by piece remake, but just that sort of idea. I love the idea of having this curve of the uh, of the end coming around there as well. Kind of like the idea of it coming right round. So I think I may well edit the track there so that uh, the track follows the coaster. Uh, lift hill running pretty slow as it should do. It's running about eight miles an hour. Obviously, you can go up to like fifteen or twenty or something ridiculous, but keeping it slow, keeping it uh, realistic. And again, you'll find here they're very slightly banked, but for the most part, the curves aren't really that banked, uh, at least on the first section of the ride. So we come down into our first drop, not that steeper drop, about 15 meters, something like that. Uh, and then coming up again into a uh, second airtime hill. And then this bit here, this is a little uh, sort of flowing there maybe, that might need a bit of an edit. Um, but this bit here is very reminiscent of some of the older British uh, coasters. Uh, like I say, very slight bank into um, a double down. That we've got here that I think works quite nicely. We go under this, obviously all this will be filled in around the path here, so we've got a nice tunnel. Um, and then we do uh, one more bunny hill and then a double up, uh, which again works out quite nicely. And then we come into the brake section, which there will be our transfer track off into, um, into a small sort of shed, uh, basically, that will be sort of at the back of the park that will end up becoming part of uh, the backstage area for the rest of the park. And, uh, and there we go, We're coming in. So I think it works quite nicely. Like I say, the only thing I'm not 100% sure about is this section, basically from there to there, whether or not this would actually be better sort of following the coaster around a little bit more, getting a little bit of interaction. Uh, we're only going to have one car running at a time. 
Um, so there's no chance of sort of coast cars coming near each other or anything. So we're not going to be able to get interaction there. Uh, but maybe, I mean, maybe even crossing over, you know, the path could come under here uh, to this side of the track and then back over again. Again, that's something that's, um, you know, relatively simple to do and probably would have happened around the time. Um, you know, it would have been quite a nice feature, I think. It would have been a bit of a selling point. So, uh, but either way, I'm really happy with basically from the station to about here. I'm really happy with it. It's just this final section. Something I always struggle with coasters, to be honest with you. I always struggle with that final section. So, uh, comments down below, really, what you would suggest. Maybe if you've built something similar, you can pop a link to the Steam Workshop uh, or maybe some screenshots or anything like that, or just general advice. Please let me know. But overall, uh, I think it's a gr it's creating a really nice sort of uh, um, what's the word like a skyline to the area there. Look at that. That looks just just sort of really starts to set off Pinewood Hills. There we go. If that's a screenshot, I don't know what is. Um, there you go. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Like I say, next episode we'll carry on with the coaster. We'll make any changes to the track that you've suggested. We'll also start working on the uh, the station, and then we'll finish off this area. We'll do a bit of work over here, and then that's pretty much stage one of the park, the 1940s original park. Uh, finished off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop them down in the comments. And if you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.